Well, good morning. How are we doing today? Yes. Well, today I'm going to be preaching from Matthew um, chapter 1, verses 18 through 25. And I know that it is Mother's Day, and so I have a, a, a couple of words just kept going through my head as I began to think about this day. And one of the words was, Mamma Mia! Mamma Mia! Mamma Mia! Oh, oh, there we go. Mamma Mia. Okay, okay. So that is the title of our sermon today. Now, it, it might seem appropriate for a Mother's Day sermon. Maybe not, but, but what I wanted to do was look at Mother's Day perhaps a little different. To look at a woman and perhaps a little different. To look at the man a perhaps a little different. So what we're going to be looking at is Matthew chapter 1, verses 18 through 25. Now, what this is actual verse deals with is the birth of Jesus Christ. This is where Mary and Joseph go through some of the emotions and fears and doubts about having a child that was given through the Holy Spirit. And the fear and the, and the doubt that, that Joseph perhaps was dealing with and suffering with because of the situation of her pregnancy. So, we're looking at the arrival of Jesus. So let's go ahead and look at this passage of Scripture very quickly. Matthew chapter 1, verses 18 through 25. We have it on our monitors. You're welcome to use your Bible, your phones, whatever works best for you. But it reads like this. It says, Now the birth of Jesus Christ was as follows. After his mother Mary betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Spirit. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not wanting to make her a public example, was minded to put her away secretly. But while he thought about these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, Do not be afraid to take you, Mary, your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. And she will bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. So as all this was done, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the Lord through the prophets, saying, Behold, the virgin shall be with child, and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is translated God with us. Then Joseph, being aroused from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord commanded him, and took, took his, his wife, and did not know her until she had brought forth her firstborn son, and he called his name Jesus. This is a powerful passage of Scripture. Because what it deals with here is a couple of people. A man and a woman. Now, this man and woman were human. They were specifically chosen for this text because God saw certain character things in them. They met each other. They dated however the Bible says they're supposed to date. I mean, however they did back in those days. Our dating situations are probably quite different than from what Mary and Joseph had to go through. So here is a couple that fell in love. They betrothed each other. Now what that means is it's a type of engagement. It's a type of engagement. Uh, now in my mind, I, I call it, they're super engaged. Have you, ever, <laughs> have you ever heard of anything like that? To be super engaged. Now, I'm married to a Vietnamese woman. One of the main things when I asked her to be my wife was she sat me down and said, now the engagement party that we have to have is very important. And so I'm like, okay, you know, know, engagement party, yeah, we can have that. She goes, no, there will be people that will fly here for our engagement party who won't come to our wedding. It's that important. Basically... Once we have this engagement party, we're married. The rest is just legal. You just sign on a paper. I mean, that's, and so this is kind of what this was 
to Mary and Joseph. They were betrothed to each other. They were super engaged. Mm -hmm. Once you go to that step, you're in a sense, you're married. Now, they, he loved this woman. He, he found this woman that he wants to spend the rest of his life with, that he wants to have children with, that, that he wants to spend the rest of his life with. And then in verse 18, it says, Before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Spirit. Now here's Joseph, and he's got to be thinking in his mind, Mamma Mia, what is going on? Oh, Mamma Mia. Oh, what's going on here? Mamma Mia. What, what? Something is not working out. Something is not right in this situation. His mind is... Now, does anybody here know that love hurts? I think we can all... <laughs> raise an arm, raise a leg, jump up and down. We've all come to that situation, that, that, that time in life where... And so, in his mind, there must have been thoughts of betrayal. There must have been thoughts of... I made a wrong decision. Or there, there was perhaps some deceiving going on. Now, in, the, in our modern times, there's more than one way to get pregnant. They can do the whole embryo thing. They can do all these different things. Now, in those days and age, there's basically one way to get pregnant. So, in your mind, you're thinking, he's got to be thinking, okay, this can't be right. So here is a man. A man picked by God because of distinct character traits that he has to have to go through this ordeal. Here is a woman who must be having emotions that are unbelievable because I doubt that she chose herself for this role. I doubt when she was a little girl she thought, all right, I'm going to get engaged, I'm going to be almost married, and then I'm going to have a baby without making a baby. You, you know, I mean, I, I doubt she stepped up for this opportunity to come her way. So imagine what's going on in her mind. But then, I'm looking at Joseph here right now. So here is a man that is a just man. In verse 19 it reads, Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not wanting to make her a public example, was minded to put her away secretly. Now, what does that mean? Now, in the biblical times, if somebody mm -hmm. did this, committed some type of an adultery, it was acceptable to stone her to death. That was okay. You could get the person, get, gather the village, whatever it is, and actually absolutely stone her. But Joseph, being a just man, as the Bible says, wanted to secretly put her away. What he is talking about here is a secret divorce. They weren't actually married. They had not been together yet. But they were, as I said earlier, betrothed, super engaged. When you're betrothed to someone in the Bible in that time, you have to actually go through a divorce. That's how engaged you are. So we don't really have that now. But, I mean, that's literally what it's like. So here's Joseph, a true believer in God, a just man. And he said, you know, I love this woman. But I don't want to hurt her publicly. You know, she's in a sense, you know, we, we've all had that sense of betrayal within us. Now, sometimes, have anybody here wanted to publicly stone the person that broke your heart, in a sense, you know what I mean? You're like, you want to rub it in their face, you want to post on Facebook about them, you want to hit Twitter, you want to hit this. You want them to pay for what they're doing. But that's, I think, one of the reasons that God chose Joseph. Because he knew he, did, he couldn't go through it that way. So he wanted to perhaps do a, a, a secret divorce. The, the turmoil in his heart. Now, as we go in through our lives and the different things that come our way, we get excited for the big things in life when they appear before us. We see an opportunity. We see a job. We see, we see a relationship that comes our way. We get excited. And I can almost guarantee that at some point during this excitement, 
something's going to throw a wrench into it. And the doubt begins to build. And your trust in God be, might begin to wane. And you begin to think it was too good to be true. I, I knew that I wasn't good enough for this. Our, our self-doubt can rise up. We can see, in a sense, the rainbow in the distance. But we can never quite grasp hold of it. Because, yeah, we're living in a life that's tough. And the devil loves to throw those wrenches into our minds, into our system, and tell us we're not good enough. So here's perhaps Joseph sitting here with the turmoil of his heart, thinking, <coughs> my true love has walked out the door. You know, what, what do I have to do? But yet still in that time, as we need to do, when, when disappointment come our way, you say, okay, I'm not going to harm the other one, though. I'm going to put it aside. And, and if it takes a secret engagement, I mean, secret divorce, then that's what I'm going to have to do as not to hurt that other person. Verses 20 through 23 read, But while he thought about these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take you, Mary, your wife. For that which is conceived in her is the Holy Spirit. And she will bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. And he shall save his people from their sins. So all of this was done that it might be fulfilled in which was spoken by the Lord through the prophet, saying, Behold, the virgin shall be with child, and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is translated God with us. Now, here's Joseph going through all the different emotions of life. And he's got to be thinking, Mamma Mia. What? what? <laughs> you know, I mean, he's trying to get a little sleep. The, the, you know, the dude's laying down. And so, what does God do? He brings in the big guns. He brings in the angels. of Now, a lot of times we're, we're trying to make decisions in our lives and, and perhaps we're unsure and, and we really need some type of divine guidance in what we're to do. And I believe that there are those specific times in our life where God brings in the big guns. Now it might not be an angel of the Lord appearing vividly before you at night. But it might be a check in the mail that says, yes, this is where the way I got to go. It might be an encouraging word from someone. It might be an opportunity that opens up. God brings in the big guns. He shows up and says, okay, this is what we got to do. So here's God. You know, Joseph's <laughs> crying out saying, what, what am I supposed to do here? But sometimes we need that big gun. We need God. I know sometimes I need God to kind of show me what to do. He kind of kick me in the rear and, and push me toward a certain direction even though I'm still kind of wondering what to do. So here is the angel of God speaking to, to Joseph. You know, probably think God's probably might be thinking, you know, use your imagination. You know, it's time to straighten this guy out. I have a call on his life. I have a plan for him. I have something that I need, to, need him to do. I don't need him going off and getting some kind of secret divorce. Mary needs him down the road. I need these two together. So... What Joseph needed at that time was a divine touch from God. Now, I know I need that at times. And God does show up when you least expect it and say, okay, this is what's going on. So an angel of the Lord appears to Joseph and tells him what to do. Imagine, if you will, what must be going through Joseph's mind. You want to talk about fear of the unknown. We're all living in an unknown circumstance, an unknown part of life, an unknown time. Here's Joseph thinking, all right, my wife is pregnant by what she says is the Holy Spirit. I'm sitting here, all of my neighbors, everybody's going to think badly of this woman should it come forth and out into the you know that the people know? I'm trying to keep it on the down low, and here's God busting me out with an angel of God. 
the fear of the unknown. Now, one of the, one cool things came through my mind as I was studying this and thinking about it is that the names already picked. They don't have to go through the book. They don't have to do none of that stuff that we typically do. You write down a list of all the names you might want. No. Jesus, that's it. It's done. That aspect is over. Hallelujah. I mean, if it was that simple for us, that'd be pretty cool. The name is done. But to understand and to realize that you are, what you have to do fulfills the prophecy, fulfills the legacy that will go on through, through time. Now, each of us here in this room, we may not see it, but we have a legacy. We have something to fulfill. God has chosen us here for this time, not by chance, but for a purpose. We might not see and understand as we go through our life exactly what we have accomplished or how it has benefited others. But I guarantee you, when we get to heaven, when all is revealed, we will be astonished what our love and prayers and support and blessings for other people did. I bet we will be mind-boggled and say, well, all I did was love that person a little bit. All I did was spend a few minutes with them, letting them vent and getting it out of them. All I did was bring that person to church a couple of times. I had no idea that it carried over and carried over and carried over. So here's Joseph. The angel of God is standing before him saying, I need you to do this. I need you to put aside your fear. I I need you to to man up (laughs) here on Mother's Day. And so Joseph is probably sitting there thinking, Mama Mia, what am I supposed to do? (laughs) Mama Mia. (laughs) So Joseph stands up. It says here in verse 24, Then Joseph, being aroused from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord commanded him and took him his wife. Now a very key point here is, and he did not know her until she had brought forth the first son, firstborn son, and he called his name Jesus. Jesus. Sometimes we got to wait. Sometimes you just got to wait. Now, Joseph is married in a sense, but he waited until Mary had their, that child to, to make sure that she was sanctified and pure when Jesus was born. He put aside his needs, his doubts, no matter what people thought of him, of her, of their family. I'm sure the word had spread now that Mary is pregnant and this and that is going on. I mean, there is a nine-month span there of pregnancy and the rumor mill must have been going on but he he became a man and he stood up and he said I will not touch her in that manner until she has fulfilled what God has done there are times in our lives when when it's easier for us to step out of the godly way to get what we want to get ahead and it's harder for us to hold back and restrain ourselves, and and be disciplined in what God does. But at the end, it all comes out for the best if we do it God's way. Now the name right there, that, that, that beautiful name, and his name is to be Emmanuel, which is translated God with us. Now I'm pretty sure we are human beings, and we need to know that God is with us. That Jesus is with us. We need to have that connection. And, and at that time, I'm sure it made a lot of sense to people to think that the, the, the Christ, the King, would be named God with us. But we can grasp hold of that today as well. We can grasp hold of that because we don't actually have Jesus standing before us. We have the Holy Spirit dwelling within us. But to say the name of Jesus. How many in this room have cried out that name before. In a time of despair, perhaps a time of praise, and I, there is something about it 
that holds power. I remember me and my family, we were in Turkey. We were all in a car. We had finished carrying the cross for that day. We put the cross on top of the car. We had a trailer on the back. We had a, a Peugeot station wagon. We all piled in. We were going to go down the road to a trailer park to take a couple of days off from our journey carrying the cross. We're on this road going to the trailer park. This truck passes us, slows down. So my father passes the truck. We get in front of it. We start going down the hill, and the truck sped up and hit us from behind, hit our trailer. I felt the car start to swerve, and I can see the trailer jackknifing coming on alongside the car where we are. I looked off to our, my right, and I saw just a, kind of a, an embankment and then an open field, but then I felt the car start going up the back end of the car start to rise. I'm sitting on the right-hand side behind my mother. I grab hold of the door handle, put my head down, and I hear her say one word, Jesus. I heard nobody else say anything at all, but it burned into my mind, her yell out, Jesus. Then all I remember is dust and dirt and Apparently, I had even flown out the window. I was hanging out the window. There were no broken bones. There were eight of us in the car, no broken bones. Over 240 bruises. We counted them up. The only blood was where my dad cut, got it cut on it, where his sunglasses hit his eye. But the name of Jesus, I know it, it affected me just by hearing it for the rest of my life. I knew that if any tough situation was coming one of the things I got to do is I got to yell out that name because it works the name of Jesus so, that, so they call him Jesus so here's Joseph he's sitting there while God's putting the pieces together he's a part of the puzzle now in modern Christian times Mary gets all the glory, in a sense. Because, yes, she is Mary. Born of a virgin. You know, all that stuff. But, I think Joseph had to deal with a lot of the real stuff that we deal with here in life. The doubt, the insecurity, the, the, the needing to kick in the butt to get going. To, to see the things like the disappointment of a relationship gone bad. In our minds, we think it has about having to put in the time, the effort, to not be embarrassed, to stand up for himself, to, to press forward with what God has in store, to love Mary, to lift her up, to support her. But on this beautiful Mother's Day, it took a woman to have Jesus. Now, I, 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 I'm a man, and I know why God chose woman. I know why God chose Mary. Because us men, we couldn't handle it. <laughs> There's something special about a mama that I know from my life and from each of you here know from your mother. There's something special. There's something strong. Now, not every person is perfect by a long shot. But there's something special about a woman. There's something special about a, woman, a mother when, when she gets that infant in her arms and those motherly instincts begin to take shape. That's why God had to have a woman. Because man was here all alone on the earth to begin with, if we remember. And God said, oh, he needs help. <laughs> that boy needs a little help. So I shall create woman. I shall remove the rib and, and, and create the woman to... to to, in my mind, to be the rock of the relationship. To be the rock that, that the man needs, that this world needs. So today on this Mother's Day, remember, it takes a mama to get the man to move forward. It takes a mama to pray for her children, to keep them covered. I know my mother prayed for me 
year after year after year after year, God bless her soul, while I was living the life of a fool. And I know that those prayers were heard by God. So let me encourage all of you mothers or mothers-to-be, keep praying, keep loving. If they don't hear you, keep praying anyway. If they don't show you the respect you need, pray harder. Pray, pray, pray on this Mother's Day because it takes a woman to fulfill what God has.